Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today I've got a bunch of stories, starting with Google Stadia not requiring a Chromecast anymore, AMD's Zen 4 base supercomputer, a new monster of an NVIDIA GPU, I don't want to get demonetized for saying this word, and the first 6 nanometer chip. But first, make sure to pick up the new 14 nanometer plus 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 squared t-shirt before Intel moves their desktop chips to 10 nanometers. So you've only got like 5 years. I kid, I kid. Make sure to pick one up by visiting the link in the description before they're gone, especially since YouTube is apparently reviewing it, so who knows what could happen. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you're one of the seven Google Stadia users out there, you'll likely be happy to hear that according to 9to5Google, you can finally get 4K streaming online without a Chromecast. Well, the rollout has started at least, as several gamers have been able to play it, and 9to5Google expects the full launch to follow as early as today. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's just hope Google doesn't cancel Stadia anytime soon like they've done so, so many times in the past. Next up for today, AMD just got a huge win with the announcement that they obtained the contract to power the US Department of Energy's upcoming supercomputer, El Capitan. Now, I know I don't discuss supercomputers too often, but this bad boy is a monster. For one, you know how not long ago Intel was discussing the first ever exaflop supercomputer? Well, this bad boy is set to hit two exaflops. In fact, it's set to be faster than the 200 fastest supercomputers of today combined. Wow. You That's a big one. That Not only that, but it'll be using AMD's next generation Zen 4 Genoa Epic CPU. So we're talking post 7 nanometer processor cores as well as their next gen Radeon Instinct. It'll also include DDR5 and PCI Express 5.0. Another interesting part of this announcement is that AMD plans to use their next gen Infinity Fabric to give the GPU and CPU unified memory. And as you can see in this slide from Tom's Hardware, it allows the code to be far shorter. Overall, the new system is expected to cost a whopping $600 million and is set to be completed in 2023. Talk about a beast of a computer. Next up for today, I have a bit of a continuation from a previous story. For those who didn't see it, RO Game found and shared a couple Geekbench benchmarks of two new NVIDIA GPUs that are almost certainly part of the next-gen architecture. Well, another user actually found a third GPU, and it's even bigger than the other two. This one comes with 124 compute units, or 7,936 CUDA cores. Now, really quickly, it is good to note that while this is pretty much definitely next-gen, we don't know for sure if it'll be called Ampere, Hopper, or what. With that said, the specs are amazing. The card comes with 32GB of memory, so once again, this is likely a Tesla card, but even with such low clocks, it got a score of over 222,000, which definitely beats everything before it, and of course this likely is just an engineering sample, so it should be able to do much better in the final product. Of course, once again, this is likely a Tesla card, so it certainly won't be cheap and definitely isn't for gamers, but it shows us just what Nvidia is capable of for next gen. And luckily, we won't have to wait long because we should hear a little something at this year's GTC conference. And to keep up with all of that news, as well as the potential high-end Navi news from the upcoming AMD event, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Next up, uh, okay, I've been told that I can't say the thing that this is because it could get this video demonetized, so we shall call it the new human malware that's going around. Hopefully everyone knows what I'm referring to, but while I just discussed it a little in my last video, there are updates. For one, Google I.O. has now been cancelled, which at the time of my last video's writing was not the case. Not only that, but the first Amazon employee was tested positive for malware in their Seattle location along with two other employees in Italy. And it doesn't stop there as a contractor in Facebook's Seattle office was diagnosed as well. That caused Facebook to shut down the location, and both Microsoft and Amazon are suggesting their employees in the Seattle area to work from home if they can. Basically, things are not looking so hot, at least in the Seattle region. Lastly for today, Unisoc announced the world's first 6 nanometer chip, which is based off of TSMC's 6 nanometer EUV process. It's called the T7520 and is their new 8 core SoC with 5G integrations. It has 4 ARM A76 cores, 4 ARM A55 cores, and a Mali G57 based GPU. Of course, this is just a mobile chip, but it's great to see tech continue moving forward. So while that does it for today, what do you think about AMD's newest supercomputer, and how powerful do you think NVIDIA's next-gen gaming cards will be? 
Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day.